Hi, I'm Phil. Welcome to Holy Habitus. And this is my video blog on discipleship and how to build a holy habitus, how to uh, alter our habits so that they are more conducive to being receptive to the grace of God, opening us up to him, building spiritual discipline into our lives and so on. But I want to talk today about the dangers of building a holy habitus. One of the parables that has uh, been going around my mind uh, and uh, going around our preaching uh, as a church recently has been the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector from Luke 18, 9 to 14, where Jesus says this to some who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everyone else. Jesus told this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like um, this tax collector. I fast twice a week and, and give a tenth of all I get. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled and those who humble themselves will be exalted. It's a, I find a very challenging parable because I think I often end up in the, the, the territory of the Pharisee. And uh, as, as much as I encourage our holy habitus, I need to recognise the challenge that comes with this par parable that actually a holy habitus can sometimes be a source of temptation uh, and open up uh, the possibility of spiritual pride or arrogance and uh, self-justification. The Pharisee in this, in this parable has a very holy habitus on paper. As he points out to God, he, he fasts twice a week and, and he gives a tenth of, of all that he gets. Um, and he's praying in the temple. Uh, so right there, he's, he's doing all three of the acts of righteousness that Jesus lists in Matthew chapter six, the ones that he singles out. It's really important to do. And it doesn't say that he's parading this in front of other people. Um, so he may even be hiding these things. But somewhere in his heart, and it comes out through his prayer. He's come to believe that his righteousness is, is something that he can build his life on. There's, he's come to become proud of, of himself in that. And, and without realising it, perhaps, he started to justify himself rather than leaning on the justifying work of God. And it's a tax collector who recognises that he, he's not at all justified by his acts because he hasn't done any. Uh, and leans on the mercy of God he's the one whom God justifies and uh, so this is a very challenging message uh, I find it very challenging um, and we need to be very aware and tuned in to the danger of how our acts of righteousness our holy habitus can actually be a become can be flipped round and become um, a, a source of temptation to spiritual pride it can be a back door through which the devil um, tempts us into the realms of self-justification and self-just uh, uh, self-righteousness uh, instead, we need to dismantle our, our, our holy habits if that's the case. We need to not let it become an idol, a routine which uh, we become proud of or, or self-satisfied or smug about. We need to not pray, thank you, God, that you've not made me like other people. But thank you, God, that you have made me like all other people. Keep me humble. Uh, have mercy on me, a sinner. So this week, let that, that thought just perhaps bubble away in your mind and think, what am I, I need to do? Where might this has crept into my life? And how can I counteract that through uh, seeking God and his mercy?